to another episode of First Impressions. Today I'm going to be reviewing Vikings Wolves of Midgar. And I'll be going through the gameplay, graphics, sound, talk about the good points, bad points and give you my overall first impression. So in Vikings Wolves of Midgar, the game itself is a top-down dungeon brawler slash exploration game. It's very similar to Diablo and Baldur's Gate in terms of the actual gameplay and the view itself. So you go around defeating enemies, bosses, doing quests and you, you get different loot but just you know, by felling enemies and bosses. The actual game starts with a basic character creation. So you can create a male, which is referred to as the warrior, or a female, which is a shield maiden. There's a small number of facial features, hairstyles, tattoo, jewellery items that you can create. And then you actually, before you actually start the game, you've then got to choose gifts. So gifts are basically from different gods and they just act as skill trees for each weapon. So you've got the staff, you've got heavy two-handed weapons, so like a great axe, great sword, dual wielding, so like two axes, two swords, sword and shield. And then you've also got the, you know, the archery tree. Uh, so you choose an initial gift or skill tree and then you start the game itself. So at the very beginning of Vikings, you go to a village which is under siege and kill all the creatures there, you know, laying waste its residents. That village then acts as your main hub and then at that hub you can go off on new raids which are basically the missions and visit, you know, various merchants. You've got armsmiths, weaponsmiths, a woman that sells accessories and it helps, you know, move the story along. The combat is basically dodging out of the way, uh, there's no block, and unless you've got a shield. Um, you can also fight using basic attacks, but also what's quite cool about Vikings is each weapon area, so whether you're using dual wielding or you know, two-handed weapons, each of those weapon sort of areas have their own skills. So if you switch between, say, dual wielding two axes to say, you know, a bow, then whatever skills you've got unlocked for each weapon type will automatically switch. So the skills are mapped to different buttons and keys, so you activate one and it has a small cooldown. But as soon as you switch weapon, whatever weapon skills you unlock are available. So you're not having to think about, you know, oh, I've only got a certain number of slots. I've got to choose, say, one skill from this weapon tree, one skill from another. It does change whenever you switch weapons automatically, which is pretty cool. So it's not limiting your character development too much. The levels are you know, quite open, so there's quite a large environment, different looking environments that are you know, quite pretty to look at. The game introduces an exposure mechanic, so as well as having a health mechanic, which is you know if your health bar reaches zero, you die, and you can you know recharge your health by um, healing charges, which are basically like potions and visiting healing or healing pots with quite blood in it. You've got an exposure mechanic, so what the exposure is is different things such as poisons, cold, so when you're going around say like a snowy area you will notice that an exposure bar gets larger and larger and if it gets to the maximum then you start losing health quite rapidly and the way to combat that is to you know, find a warm heat source like a fire and then that just basically resets the exposure bar so it does mean when you're fighting not only you've got the enemies to contend with and dodge but you also got the elements as well so you, oh, well, you might be winning against the you know the creatures you fight and you then might succumb to exposure so it does add another sort of level of you know intensity and wariness to the game that you've got to keep an eye out for. Um, you've got bosses in the game as well so you've got at each sort of area level there's a boss you've got to fight and there's different ways of you know defeating the bosses and figuring out their attack patterns so they're quite interesting. You've got a resources and crafting system as well so when you're fighting different enemies you'll find things like wood, iron, gold and when you go back to your hub area and you visit a merchant that means you can you know, obviously buy weapons and armor and accessories, but also upgrade the, each weapon, you know, merchant or you know, weapon, you know, weapon merchant, you know, armor smith. So if you think of like games like Diablo in mean, like the last one, you could upgrade the stock itself, and that gives you a larger array of items to buy. And it also in this game it means that the weapons will be around higher quality. When you level up in the game, so when you sort of go around fighting enemies you'll notice like what looks like spots of blood and your character absorbs that and that's just basically your experience and you visit a nearby altar either at your hub village or in the whatever level you're exploring and that allows you to increase one of the stats so either your strength, damage per second, you know, your speed or your resistance like exposure, health and then once you level up that gives you some skill points to invest in the skill trees and is there also 
a trials area in the hub, uh, which is your village. So the trials are basically the names of the different gods in the game, and you allows you to fight different waves of enemies, which get harder and harder. But by completing the trials, you get a hell of a lot of resources, which is quite good, especially when you want to start, you know, upgrading the merchants in the game. When it comes to the graphics in Vikings, um, the levels themselves are nicely designed, so there's enough barriers between each of the locations, but they all don't look the same. You know, they're quite nice to look at, a lot of detail, especially in the weather effects and the you know, like particle effects and when you're shedding blood and um, setting off explosions and things like that. The on-screen prompts, so if you're nearing death, you've got like a flash in blood or if your exposure levels increase, you know, they do stand out quite nicely. Actual character models themselves of the you know people and the creatures are not very detailed. They're passable themselves, but they're on par with games like you know Diablo, Baldur's Gate. So graphics are a main feature of this game. But it's more about the actual you know roaming around you know dungeon crawling itself. So the NPCs and main characters and, and you know features opponents you face in the game are all fully voiced so that's done very well if you're not having a light just on text. When you're actually fighting and you know exploring levels your main character the voices are only marked that you can hear as well. The actual dialogue it is a little bit corny so you know it's a little bit cringe worthy at times. But the thing that stands out for most for me is the actual musical score. So the music is very epic, it's um quite you know in tune with games of its series so you've got a dramatic build up during battle and it, you know, it just stand out it, the soundtrack itself does seem, seem quite epic and memorable and aside from that as well the sound effects used for like when you're in combat so like weapon strikes um you know blood splatter things like that you know they're quite clear and sharp it's just the dialogue itself is a bit corny but on the whole the actual sound and music is done to a high standard <laughs> When it comes to the good points in Vikings, there's quite a lot to list, so the combat itself is enjoyable, so if you're a fan of games like Diablo or Balmor's Gate, you're going to like the combat in this. I like how you're not limited to a set number of weapon skills that you can only choose your favourites from. I like how the fact that when you switch weapon, whatever weapon skills you've got will automatically change when you've got that current weapon equipped, so you're not limited. You've got a exposure system, so that's quite a cool mechanic in terms of you've got to watch out for things that are going to harm you from the environment as well as the actual health levels. You've got challenges to complete, so you've got the Trials of Gods, but also you can replay levels and complete challenges, it gives you an incentive to replay and you can be, you know, resources. The levels are quite large, and you've also got the crafting system that's enjoyable and it's familiar to people who played other games, as I mentioned, Diablo, Baldur's Gate, and the music is very epic as well. When it comes to the bad points in Vikings, um, I'd say the story is not that interesting, it's a bit bland. Reason being is because I mentioned the dialogue is a little bit corny. When it comes to your main character interacting with NPCs at, you know, during sort of story events, it kind of detracts from the, um, the actual plot itself, so it, you don't really kind of follow what's going on too much because it comes out with some odd little jokes and quirky statements. You actually find out more about what's going on and what you're doing in between each level when they load and you've got a different narrator explaining what's happening. It would have been nice to have maybe some more customization options on the actual character design because the ones you do have are a bit limited but I suppose on the flip side you don't really see too much of your character model to really notice them. It just would have been nice you know, to have a few more tweaks uh, just for you, you know, your own mind's eye image of what your character looks like. Uh, the upgrade system for the different merchants and vendors it is uh, quite expensive. Uh, when you first enter it, it takes a hell of a lot of resources and you only really need to achieve that number of resources that you require just by doing multiple playthroughs of you know, either the trials or the levels to complete the challenges when you've actually done the main story of each level. Overall, Vikings, Wolves and Midgar is definitely an enjoyable game. If you're a fan of games such as Baldur's Gate, Diablo, you know, Dungeon Siege, you can definitely like this game. The combat's very similar to those games and it, you know, it's essentially more of the same but it does have its own little 
take on the genre. So rather than it being set in medieval Europe or the Dark Ages, like most of the games of this nature are, I do like how this has taken the game and put it into a Norse mythological setting. I enjoy the combat and the exposure system in the game. So the exposure adds a new mechanic, an element of risk and danger, as well as the actual you know fighting and combat itself, which has got a lot of variance from the weapon types. And overall, if you're looking for you know an RPG experience with a lot of you know dungeon crawling, loot drops, you know scavenging for resources, game's going to keep you occupied. And although the story is a bit bland, overall, if you're just looking for the actual gameplay experience, itself, it's quite enjoyable and it does keep you occupied quite easily. Mm -hmm.